All right, so cricket is where we begin this edition of the Sports Max Zone. West Indies and South Africa will clash in the first three T20 internationals at Sabino Park in preparation for their bids at the T20 World Cup hosted in the Caribbean and the USA. The games will be contested on May 23rd, 25th and 26th. While speaking to the media following a training session on Tuesday, spinning all-rounder Rustin Chase says that the team is ready for the challenge. Obviously, it's a series leading up to the World Cup, so I mean, we had the camp in Antigua. The guys have had some good preparation, so we're really looking forward to it. I think it's just a chance for us to um, get our combinations and our tactics right leading up to the World Cup, so it's just a, a, a good run up for us. Chase, whose popularity is still relatively fresh in the T20 format, is satisfied with his growth in the shortest version of the game. I think I've come a long way. I mean, that was a, um, three, three or two years ago, so that was really my time when I burst on the scene. But I've been around for a long while. I've been with the team now for the last couple of years. I, um, the, the, the coaches and the staff make my, my role very clear to me, so that is a, a, a makes it easy for me to execute when I go there. My, my mind is clear on exactly what I need to do. And as I say, just uh, everyone wants to perform, so I'm just looking for a good performance if I get the opportunity in, in the World Cup and just to put my name for it out there. Well, our guest to help us preview the series enjoyed being with us so much on Tuesday that we had to bring him back today. We're talking about Nikhil Utam Chandani. Nikhil, I can get used to this. Thank you very much, Maria. <laughs> uh, me as well. Lovely Kingston, you know. Happy to be here and yeah, happy to be back in the studio. Yeah, oh, really, really happy to have you um, live on our sets here in Kingston, Jamaica. So I was reading an article earlier today in preparation for this segment and the headline said, a chance for discards and out of formers. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, wow, whoever wrote that headline was brilliant because they're spot on. This is what this is about, an opportunity for those who have been overlooked to just prove themselves. I don't know how lucky they're going to be. They have to like pull off a Shamar Joseph or something, mm. but I feel like it's an opportunity. Yeah, it is. I think, um, look, Desmond Haynes has been asked several times about his reserves and he hasn't named them yet. Probably right. one of the only teams not to do so. So I think he's also in Jamaica as well. Um, it's a great opportunity for a few guys who probably were close. I think about Kyle Mears, Obed McCoy, a few guys who were on the fringe of that World Cup team to put in a few really good performances and be at least a travelling reserve. The nature of the cricket schedule is so hectic that... You think, obviously, you don't want it to happen, but injuries happen all the time. And a World Cup is coming thick and fast. There's been a lot of intensity in the cricket that's been played this year. I think easily someone could be called upon. So it's a huge opportunity, I think, in this series. And even for the guys who are in, Shamar Joseph has never played international cricket. So it was great to see him at practice today, steaming in. Um, he looks quite ready for the challenge. And, and someone like a Ross Chase, who we just heard from, has only played a handful of games in the last two years. Right, and the ICC, of course, requires the confirmed squads on May 25th. Mm. So I think like there's that little window, of course, for these players to impress. I want to start, though, with a team that will be suiting up, you know, one of the major talking points. A lot of the players that will be playing at the World Cup is not here. But let's talk about Brandon King first. Um, he will be, mm. what, he'll be captain in the team, of course, and people will be looking at him as an opener in that particular role. How has he looked with the little of time that you spent here? You know, he's very important. Um, obviously, he's come off an injury, didn't go to the Nepal series. So it's been a few months that he hasn't played any professional cricket. So I think from that perspective, it's really important that he gets out there. Um, and he's sort of been a linchpin at the top of the order. They've changed Johnson Charles and Kyle Mears, but King has remained. Um, I think what he adds, just I think the potency against both pace and spin, he's really sort of evolved his game in the last couple of years and he's going to be massively important. It's, it's so critical and the West Indies do so much better when he sort of gets out the power play, gets them off to a good start. And you know that Charles uh, will sort of go at a bit more high risk approach. So if yeah. Brandon King can be aggressive but still be consistently able to get out of the power play and still going at a good tempo, I think it's going to give West Indies that perfect platform. He's, he's critical. One of the things that um, is going to be crucial to this series, notwithstanding the fact that the best players of both teams are not going to mm. be here, or some of them certainly, it's going to be the state of the pitch. Um, you know, have you heard anything about how it might mm. play tomorrow, and, and who would it who would it suit? 
depending on what you've heard. Yeah, I've seen it actually, I've seen it in the last couple of days. There's impressively a lot of green grass on it, which means that the ground staff have done well to continuously water it. But if you look a bit deeper with sort of underneath the grass, it's very dry. And I think you look at these pictures, you can see, I mean, the outfield is perfect, but you look at that square, you can see the dryness in the surface and how humid outside it is. So I definitely think spin will come into play. You look at the last couple of years, that New Zealand series spin was very important. Ireland, which was here a couple of years ago, also very important. So definitely think both teams who have got a good component of spinners, you can see Moti, Hossein, Chase, all three of them. And then for South Africa, Shamsi, Fortin, and maybe Naba Fita as well. Mm. Oh, well, McCoy is probably, would have probably felt hard done by not mm. being selected in the first squad that was announced a few weeks ago. Given that he's left arm over, mm. do you see him playing any kind of critical role in, especially during the middle overs in this series against South Africa, given the, the, the propensity of the mm. South Africans to really hit and hit far? For me, I think he, I would love to see him in all three games. Um, listen, the West Indies, we've spoken about, about it a lot on the show. The biggest struggle has been the death bowling. Yeah. And for me, what McCoy gives you is someone who obviously is favoured at the back end, but it's just the variety that he has, the back of the hand, slower balls, experience is a big thing. Bowling in that phase, which is so difficult, um, is why I felt he should have been in the team. But again, the selectors went another direction. What I would like to happen, though, is they still back him in these three games because... As we're seeing with other teams, guys are breaking down. You just heard Lamy Chane has a visa issue. You never know what could happen. And I think given that that is the West Indies' probably biggest weakness, it helps to have someone who is experienced and ready to sort of fit into that role if required. Mm. Yeah. Kyle Mears, I wonder, it's, mm. it's, it's, since we're on it, he's had a kind of up and down, well, last few years, actually. I mean, he had a stretch where he wasn't doing anything much. And then the BP at least scored, I think, yeah. a couple of, like 200 and something runs, I think it was. <laughs> in about six matches, mm. I think it was, which is not bad. You know, like, averaging about 30 per inning. Right. How crucial is this series for him as he tries to re-establish himself as one of the key players in the West Indies team? Yeah, massive. I think uh, I'm, I'm interested to see if Brandon King gives him the ball as well. Ha didn't see Robin Powell use him much with ball in hand, but he's shown in all the franchise career he's played, the BPL is one where he's dominated with ball in hand. CPL is another one. Um, I think he could be a handy option, and that's what we need to look for, guys that can play a few different roles and mm -hmm. be multidimensional. So I think... I don't think he'll open the batting. I can see them going Charles and King, who will open at the World Cup. But if he bats at three, um, it's a huge opportunity to not only show, look, I can get back in the runs after a good BPL, but he sat down pretty the entirety of the IPL, so he hasn't played any sort of matches for a while. Uh, but watching him in the nets, he's looked fluent. He's been probably one of the better batters that I've seen. Uh, just hit such a clean hit of the ball. But I think it's as, like it is for McCoy and all the other guys, it is a huge opportunity. And there's something to prove here in this series for the West Indies because they will know that there are two or three spots up for grabs as a traveling reserve. So it mm. should be quite interesting in these next... I'll talk before I throw it back to Maria. Mm. Given that this is not our, full, our A team, so to speak, what is it that you think that Darren Sam will be looking for in terms of execution, mm. match awareness tomorrow, especially because one of the things that has plagued the West Indies over the years is the, the deficit of match awareness. Right. Wrong shots at the wrong time of the game that puts the team in a, in, a, in a very precarious situation that they have to then try to climb out of. Right. What do you think Darren Sam will be looking for tomorrow in terms of how that plays out against a pretty strong South African team, notwithstanding the fact that they have some... Rabad and others are missing. I think it's a good way to measure Darren Sami's success. I say that because he has instilled a certain level of intensity and a way that he wants to go about things in the last two years. One thing he stayed consistent with is these group of guys. So he stayed with that 12 or 13 players to play every series over the last two years. Now, you have the guys who have been on the fringes, have looked on from the outside. A few of them have been sprinkled in a few series. How does that sort of culture and that winning mentality sort of how does it maintain in the players who are not in that core? And I think that is how we'll know if, if they can come and dominate this series. Yes, it's a weakened South Africa team, but I think it'll show you the strength of Darren Sami and the strength of the culture that he's sort of set in in the time that he's been in the job. Because you know, Athenaeus, Ford, all these guys have been in and out of the team. Fabian Allen have been on the outskirts. Yeah. But if they can come in and sort of buy into that immediately, feeding off of the Brandon Kings, the Johnson Charles, the Mears who have been there, I think it says a lot and speaks volumes for, for the West Indies and where we're going. Yeah, and Nikhil, I mean, you, you carry the title as, of course, a cricket analyst, mm. a commentator. But that aside, you're also an avid follower of the game. You're a fan of the game, mm. if I'm to say so, right? 
Are you personally concerned that a lot of the players are missing or do you think and the ones that are missing are like our captain, mm. I think that's a big deal, but our captain is playing in the IPL, right. which is of course a very high level competition, high intensity competition, personally. Right. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> I thought long and hard about it, to be honest. As a fan, a West Indian fan, I want the best for West Indies cricket. I want to see the guys here. Yeah. Um, however, I but is that the best for West Indies cricket? Well, true, because it's a very high level in the IPL. What I would say, though, for the guys like Alzari or Sherfane Rutherford, okay. who are not playing and probably will not feature at this stage of the tournament, maybe I would have liked to see them come back just to get that match sort of match fitness in. But again, I can't fault... Um, the team for wanting to have them as backup options. You never know if a Rutherford will need to be inserted in. So yes. from their perspective, but I think I do understand. You look at Hetmeyer today, I know we're going to get to IPL, but that, that pressure and that intensity to be in these sort of positions, it's only going to help him as a player. Probably mm -hmm. a bit more than being in a warm-up series ahead, ahead of the T20 World Cup. So it's twofold, but you saw England, they were very stern and they pulled their players no matter how important they were. So it's a decent conversation between board players and, and franchises. Mm, I agree. Yeah. One of the key things, though, is that um, given the chemistry of the team or what, we intend, what, mm. the, what the intended chemistry of the team is going to be, wouldn't it be better to have like, some of these guys you know, in mm. a series like this that you can then start to build that chemistry leading them to the World Cup? I would say so, but what I think, why I think it's not a huge deal is because actually the West Indies and South Africa are two of the very few teams in the world who have maintained this group of guys for the last two years. So you look at... Beginning of last year was South Africa. They went there, beat them. They played England, played India, and then played Australia. It's been those same guys in those positions, in those defined roles. I think there's a clear understanding of what is required. So from that perspective, I'm, I see for a team like England, who haven't spent a lot of time together, I can see why they felt the need. So from a West Indian perspective, I still feel quite safe knowing that guys understand what is required when they're in franchise colours and in West Indian colours because there's been so much familiarity in this team. Final question from home port of the decision for Johnson Charles. He has been hot and cold, mm. more cold than hot, actually, in recent times. Um, how crucial is this series for him to get himself back on track? Yeah, very important. Um, the key thing about him is obviously at that age to continue performing at such a high level, and he's proven himself. Even in Nepal, a couple of weeks ago, he got 100. Mm. So definitely important. He's just, uh, when he's on, as we've seen in the previous World Cups, he is unstoppable, and he's one of the few players who have won a World Cup in this squad. So they're going to rely on his experience heavily. And yeah, I think for all the guys, they'll be looking to get performances out of these three matches. Mm. Yeah. Well, of course, Leighton asked about um, tomorrow and Johnson mm. Charles. But Nikhil, as we get ready to wrap this segment, what type of cricket are we looking forward to tomorrow? Yes, T20 cricket. Mm. But is it going to be exciting? What do you think the vibes going to be like at Savannah Park? Mm, I think very entertaining, to be honest. I remember watching cricket in Jamaica as a child. You always hear the horns. That's the biggest thing that Jamaicans have. And even talking to some of the taxi guys, the people on the streets, yeah. they're, they're coming to the cricket. So there seems to be that buy-in from the public. It's been almost two years since you've had cricket in Jamaica. And I really hope you can have a couple of sellout uh, crowds. It's playing at a great time. Tomorrow's a holiday, then the weekend. And I would implore, I think people don't understand how important fans can be to that West Indies team. Yes. And we have to use that home advantage in this World Cup to be successful. Yeah, and we're getting ready for the World Cup as well. So maybe we can just start celebrating from now. Come out to Sabina Park and of course Nikhil will be there. And, you know, the entire West Indies team will be looking for the support. We go to break. We c when we come back, we'll continue talking cricket.